You were sent here for a reason, and even if it takes you the rest of your life, you owe it to yourself to find out what that reason is. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, Justice League The Snyder Cut, Black Suit Superman. Once the world's most powerful and iconic superhero, Superman personified a higher calling to truth and justice and deep respect for all humanity. The absence of this fallen idol, whose sacrifice stunned the world, inspires the formation of the Justice League. Before we spend some more time with the Man of Steel, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. I don't know why I was going for dramatic pauses. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to take this tape measure, we're going to put it right to where we normally put, right to the very top of their heads, in this case, Superman's head, and we're going to move it across. Why are we moving it across, by the way, and why don't you just measure it right there? Well, only because it's going to hit his arm. I know I've probably already said that a couple of times in previous reviews. If I measure it right here, well, the laser's going to... Okay, we're overcomplicating the matter. We're going to move it across, and I'm going to stop it right there. Black Suit Superman stands 8.4 inches in height. We can switch that over to centimeters, revealing that the figure stands 21.5 or 21.5 centimeters tall. I'm sure you're probably wondering why we're looking at the Black Suit Superman first, instead of going with the more traditional classic colors on him. The only reason why we're looking at this one first is because I, you know, he's in the movie with this outfit. And I thought to do proper justice, no pun intended, we would actually look at Black Suit Superman first. And then we're going to throw a lot more color at him as we look at the more traditional colored costume in the next review. With that being said, let's bring in a couple of other figures for some size comparisons. Here he is next to Tactical Suit Batman. A great looking figure. Here he is next to The Flash. We've also looked at. Here he is next to Aquaman probably could say the most disappointing so far figure that we've gotten from this wave, and I can't imagine it's going to be dethroned anytime soon. And we also just recently looked at Cyborg. Just like that. Four reviews in, we've already now finished off. By the way, if you're all also wondering where Wonder Woman's been this whole time, I tried tracking down where I put Wonder Woman to get preparation done for these reviews. I'm not even sure where I put her. If I can find her by the end of all of this, because there's still a bit of a journey ahead of us, I'll bring her in and you guys can see how she stacks up with the rest of the figures. But in the meantime, here are all the Justice League figures that we've looked at so far. Sad news for Soups is he doesn't have much in the way of accessories. Yes, he does come with a flight stand, so that's something. And he does also come technically with a trading card, but that's it. That's all he gets. For the trading card, at least I'm happy to see that they actually used the source material of having the black costume featured prominently here on the front of the card instead of just giving us a you know just a random version of superman with his traditional blue and red costume no they actually did give us the black costume i like that the back of the card also lists the stats which again the source here listed is justice league director's cut nowhere on here does it actually say the snyder's cut i don't know it still was, as far as I know, called the Snyder Cut of Justice League, and yet they had to use Director's Cut. I'm not really sure the reasoning for that. There is a very small read-up, though, down below. You can pause that, certainly, if you like. Or you can also, again, just listen to the beginning of this review, where I read the back of these cards. Put that to the side. Like I said, though, the only other thing that he comes included with is his flight stand. Nothing different, really, with this flight stand versus the other flight stands we've gotten with soups before. Got the DC logo down below. Uh, you can, in theory, I say in theory, detach the two, but when you get them out of the packaging, you're basically getting the neck as a separate piece, and you're getting the base as a separate piece, and you put the two together, which I'll show you in a second. You can, in theory, and I keep saying in theory, remove the neck like I just did, and just use it as a regular stand. The problem with it, though, is using clear plastic. It sits, let me just show you how this attaches. It sits inside the track here, and you snap it together. I've tried in the past with other flight stands to do this, yet, funny enough, I'm not having too much of an issue with Superman's here, but the other ones in the past, I haven't been able to move them at all. And the moment there's that resistance, it's sort of telling you loudly, don't move me, don't move me. 
I told you, don't move me. That's going to crack. So I didn't really want to do that. But sure enough, funny enough, I was able to do that for this review. So you can have it either as a regular stand or if you want to have them in a flight pose, just snap that into place. The top of the stand has this that swivels back and forth. It sits on a ratcheted joint. And then you can also open and close the waist clip. This certainly comes in handy if you want to have Superman in a either a levitating pose, which you're basically just going to lift his cape up and fit it around his waist like that. And while it may, may seem like there's not nearly enough holding him in place, you'd be surprised how strong of a grip that actually holds the Man of Steel. What you can also do too is that you can have it in a flight pose. So if you just take again the same idea, you don't have to put it in between his legs, but at least if you want to have him in a flight kind of position like this, you can do that as well. Really like these stands. I wish we would actually get more stands with characters that you would expect to be in flight poses, kind of like Cyborg that we just looked at not too long ago. So those are the other accessories that come included with Superman. Like I said, that's it. One thing I would have liked to do, and we'll talk more about that when we look at the classic costumed Superman, is that I wish this Superman would have had a different head sculpt. As you'll see when we do eventually look at that figure that we'll do in it, sort of the reverse bizarro way of doing things, uh, it's like the same head sculpt. If they had given this specific Superman maybe an angrier head sculpt or vice versa with the glowing uh, uh, glowing red eyes, I think that would have been a nice touch because it certainly would have made them look different from one another. As it stands right now, you're pretty much getting the same figure just with a different swap of paint. Uh, for the head sculpt, though, while I could say that maybe the skin is a little too pale, it's actually a really good likeness. It's not dead on, though, mind you, but certainly close enough that I get, when I'm looking at it, the portrait of Henry Cavill. Uh, the eyes, outlined nicely in black. I thought there may have been an issue, actually, this one eye looked like it was wandering a bit like Shannon Doherty's eyes. Oh, stop. You still picking on Shannon Doherty? All the time. All the time. But actually, this one's pretty good. Like, the eyes are nicely and very cleanly painted, They've even actually painted a line, it seems, in between the two lips. Now, certainly up close, when we always look at these figures up close, it's sort of, you reveal more of that speckling. That's the way that these figures are painted. Idea on mind, though, on paper, you're really not going to be looking at a figure this close, but we always do it on, this re on these uh, reviews, so you guys can see the features painted on these figures. Short of again, I, I feel like short of again, like the skin being a little too pale, it's not really that bad of a likeness at all of Henry Cavill. The hair is sculpted nicely, too. You have just the one little curl that's off to the side. He doesn't have a traditional Superman curl. It's not forced, either, like Brendan Routh's uh, Superman, that they had to put, like, a hair appliance on it. It just looked so out of place. But this is Superman just regularly combing his hair, and it looks much more realistic to me. So, yeah, like, like I like the head sculpt. Head sculpt's really good. Spin it around so you can certainly see it from the back. The neck under certain lit conditions may actually come across like it's a little bit, I don't know, a little too narrow. But to be fair, the only place where you're seeing it as narrow is really the back of the figure, where they sort of have to allot for a little extra gap when it comes to the figure's articulation, which we'll talk about more in a second. Uh, when it comes certainly to the rest of his outfit. Now, this is his return suit that he wears in the movie. I think the only thing that this figure misses a little bit on is the coloring of the cape. I think in the movie, it's actually more of a gray color than it is actually black. The plastic, though, is very dense. Batman's cape actually was a little softer than this, and maybe you could chalk it up to the fact that there's a lot of layers here. It's sort of like phyllo pastry. We have to layer upon layer and butter each of the individual layers. You know so much about phyllo pastry. I, I tend to know as much as I can about pastries. But it sort of has an overlapping look to it. It does result in being a very thick very very more gummier cape than maybe Batman's we looked at before. It does have some decent texturing done to it, as you can certainly see up close here. Nice looking cape. Again, I feel like it should be gray, but in the movie I didn't really like the fact it was gray. In fact, I didn't even like the fact he had a cape. Supposedly, he wasn't going to even have a cape. This Superman, at one point, it was planned to have him with longer hair and sporting a beard like he was in the comics. But apparently the company, the studio, nixed that. Said, no, 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 we, we have to keep Superman 
looking the same, even though he's been buried this whole time. He has to look the same as he did before he was buried. I would have preferred personally the beard on his face. I mean, that's my own personal preference. It has no real weight, no weight at all really on this figure because the figure looks like he does from the movie. But as a side note, I certainly would have loved longer mullet haired uh, Superman with the longer beard. That's just me. When we get a closer look though at his costume, you can see so much of the work got put into this. That's a lot of OT. That's a lot of overtime that they spent sculpting this. And everywhere you look on the costume, there seems to be this scroll work texturing. Not that I really should be focusing in on the figure's groin, but just again to drive home the idea that when you see up close like this, even the Superman emblem not only has that scroll work, but also for the movie, they, in, they added this extra little kind of scroll coil that goes in the middle of things. It's not too jarring that it pulls away from the emblem that he's used to having, but it just adds a little bit of extra character to it. Coloring for what little there is, because I would imagine like the arms, the torso, and the legs are all just the molded plastic. It's a nice shiny plastic too, so it reflects the light quite well. And then the places that would be painted would be the emblem done in silver. The belt and the side little stripes done also in silver. And they're pretty much it. That's it. The boots also seem to be a slightly different color than the rest of his body. I can't help but also notice and draw your attention to the fact that his knees... For some strange reason, Superman's knees seem to be a different color than the rest of his body. It may have had something to do with the type of plastic that they used. Uh, for his hands, he does have the regular flat flying hand. I mean, the figure's sort of designed around the idea of putting him in a flight pose. Uh, and then, of course, he's got the close fist on the other side. Could there have been an opportunity to include swappable hands? Absolutely. There's always an opportunity to include swappable hands, considering that Superman here... The black costume version of Superman doesn't come with any real accessories other than the flight stand. It would have been nice also that they included some swappable hands instead. Of course, when he goes to start fighting Steppenwolf. Looking at the articulation now on black suit Superman, his head rotates all the way around. It sits, after all, on a ball joint. And I find because of that gap we talked about before, which isn't really so super noticeable, as you can see there on the back, because they've allotted enough clearance, it does give you a lot more range when it comes to moving the figure's head up, when it comes to moving the figure's heads down. It also comes to rotating the head back or hinging the head back and forth this way. Superman's arms can hinge out comfortably. The stopping point, I would say, is just beyond the point of 90 degrees. Just a little after this is at the point where you may want to say, no, no, no I think that's enough. I've gotten as much as I need out of this figure. I'm not going to ask any more of it. That's, like I said, as much as you're going to get from the hinge on the on the arms out. They rotate, yes, all the way around. Let's bring that arm down. He does have, like the other Justice League figures, the little socket of joint in the inside. And they actually did sculpt this, the same type of texturing as they did for the rest of his body. I don't know if it results in that socket joint being sort of null and void, because it doesn't seem like it wants to move all that much. It could also just be super tight on, on this figure, on the figure that we're looking at right here. But he does have the socketed joint. It's on the inside there. Just, it's not really moving though. He does have a swivel on the bicep, though while looking at it, when you take the figure out of the packaging, it almost looks like it's all one mold. But no, you can swivel at the bicep. It gets a little more hung up because Superman's biceps are so big. Imagine that just being your biggest hassle in life. Oh, my biceps are way too big. But yes, as it results in... Superman's arms are a little harder to rotate at the bicep area where it connects to the shoulders. It does have a double hinge on the elbow. You can rotate the hands all the way around. And you can also hinge them back and forth too. Upper torso is pretty much what you would expect. Upper torso is a ball joint. And then, down below, you've got a secondary ball joint. His lower under ruse, which normally would have been a different color in the comics, all done here in black doesn't seem as soft of a plastic as they did for uh, uh, Cyborg and also for Flash. Flash seemed to have the softest briefs. Not that that's the reputation that you want to have. He's got pretty soft briefs. But his seemed to be the softest. Superman's actually, he has pretty solid briefs. Take that as, as you want. Um, the figure still manages to still hinge the legs out. Almost a full splits. But yeah, I'm surprised like the plastic isn't as soft as it was on Flash. Why? Why is that? Why is that the case? Legs hinge forward and back. He has a swivel basically where that thigh attaches to the ball joint. He does have a double hinge on the knee. 
While he doesn't have any articulation for the boot, the boot is basically just a continued sculpted piece from the knee down. He does still have a hinge back and forth on the foot where the ankle is, of course. It hinges back and forth this way. And he does also have toe articulation. So there's that. And of course, yes, even though we're likely probably going to be displaying this guy, I'm likely going to be displaying this guy, I think, in a flight pose. He does have pegels on the undersides of his feet. So yeah, there's that. You can use it either with the peg that's on the bottom of the base as it is right now. But I mean, you know, you're going to have sort of this in the way of things. Or yes, you can also just make use of a black display stand, which this Superman didn't come included with bit of a backwards way of looking at things. I mean, when the fact that we looked at the black suit Superman first, but for me, I, I thought to myself, you know what? I have classic costume, classic color Superman in front of me. And I've also got the regeneration suit that he ends up getting in the movie. Wh which one would I want to go with? Well, I would have normally gone with the classic colors, but I thought to my myself, no, I'm going to do things the opposite way this time. This is the costume that he has in the movie. So this is really the costume I wanted to have a look at first. It's still though, meaning that we are going to be looking at the classic costume, those more traditional colors on the Man of Steel in the upcoming review. Stay tuned for that. The Justice League Snyder Cut, I consider to be the superior of the two films. I never really liked the theatrical release of Justice League. It was a movie I went in and I really forced myself. I gotta like this. It's Justice League. I gotta like this. It's DC. I gotta like this. It's Batman, Superman, Flash, Aquaman, and Wonder Woman. And yet walking out, very disappointed. I didn't have that experience, though, the, what, four hours or so of watching the Snyder Cut. It didn't even feel like it was four hours either. It seemed to pace itself rather nicely, and it didn't seem to have any real lull or boring points to it. I feel also as well, all the characters represented in the movie, in the Snyder Cut at least, were so much better handled than they were in the original theatrical cut. And why I say all of this in preparation of what I'm about to say for Superman here on the rotisserie, one of the things that the Snyder Cut does in fact feature is of course Superman with his very comic-inspired black costume. Mind you, he does have a cape, which... I would have preferred if he didn't have the cape in the movie, and I would have certainly preferred if he had longer hair and the beard. This was all stuff Zack Snyder had planned to do, but you know, the company, the studio sort of went in and <laughs> said, no, we can't do that. We got to keep Superman more traditional that people would recognize. I, I would have loved a longer mullet haired Superman with the beard, but what we at least get is a nod to the comics and the black suits Superman looked fantastic on screen. Of course, that was, again, all the reasons why I wanted to look at this figure first before looking at, you know, the, the blue and the red regular, regular Superman. Uh, both the figures are identical. And, and as you'll see, as sort of a precursor for the review of that other Superman, you'll see when I show them off. They're, it's pretty much the exact same figure, just with a different coat of paint. And, and I'm not bothered by the idea that we're essentially getting the same mold, just in a slightly different colored variant. It seems to be what the M.O. is of McFarlane Toys as of late. Let's release a figure and find a different way to release him in a different color. And, you know, normally I would be like, I, I don't want to get on board every single different colored version of The Flash, but Superman, and specifically the Snyder Cut Superman in a black suit, yeah, sign me up. It is disappointing, I will say at least. As much as I like this figure, he could have come with something different, a different head sculpt to differentiate him from the other Superman that we're going to be looking at in a second. Heat ray vision, angrier eye, uh, face, and all that stuff would have been nice. That would have been a nice touch. Maybe some other accessories too. Uh, so far, we haven't gotten a mother box with any of the figures that we're be we've been looking at. Superman would have been a good opportunity to have like those three mother boxes that are coming together. I think that would have been a nice included accessory. He's sort of bare bones when it comes to things that he comes included with. A stand, a card, that's it. But you at least get a pretty nice looking Superman when it's all said and done. Have you, if I can throw this out to you, the viewing audience, have you picked up either one of these Supermans? And if you have, which one is your favorite? Probably might be something I should have held off and asked you guys when we looked at the other Superman. But do you like the black costume Superman on this figure or do you like the more traditional colors? Let me know down below in the comments section. If you guys are also new to this channel and somehow you just got... I don't know how you just ended up here out of nowhere. Maybe you found your, yourself way through a portal generated by the mother boxes. Can we talk afterwards? I 
it's probably so much easier to get to work instead of having to drive there, just jump into a portal, but then I'm going to have to deal with Desaad and dark side. Maybe that's probably not a good idea. But if you are new to this channel, enjoying all the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Yes, of course, you can do all the the requirements, the things, of course, YouTube says that you have to do. Subscribe, yes. Hit that bell notification, yes. And making sure you're coming back to this channel because we will be looking at the full color treatment of soups. We are still going to be looking at Steppenwolf, and we are still going to be looking at Dark Side. Even though Dark Side got re-released later on with the armor, we're going to be looking at Sans Le Armor Dark Side as he looks kind of in the flashback scene. Lots of stuff coming your way, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.